the fact that capitalism is seen as evil as well. I, I just don't think that's helpful. That is going to connect people from all sorts of religions, races, ages, for us to be aligned on the same mission of peace. Do you really own anything except Bitcoin? Private capital accumulation, which is what Bitcoin really allows us to do, I think leads to much more flourishing, much more individual purpose and a huge amount more of creativity. There is something very unfair about what's happening in the world, but it's not the fact that some people have a lot and you don't have much. It's the rules of the game by which we're all playing by. Bitcoin is the only truly objective arbiter of private property. The returns on your violence is going to drop massively, so I believe the cost of defense is going to drop drastically as well. The dollar, the yen, all of the euro, all of these symbols symbolize corruption, symbolize pollution, symbolize dyes, and Bitcoin symbolizes purity, hope, brilliance. I have some bars and restaurants where I actually can pay with Bitcoin in middle of Europe, in, in Austria, which is amazing that this is already reality. I'm giving you a dollar that I know is corrupted, devaluing quickly, infinitely reproducible for something that you've put so much care and time into. That is not a fair exchange. Why do you call yourself the natural investor? Like, why, why is that? It's a lifetime project. It's what I want to leave behind for when I die. Uh, so for the world, it's been able to combine the money and the soul. So we, we can go down this whole, um, route if we want, but it's it, after visiting India and being there for four months in deep meditation and, and uh, training to be a yoga teacher, there's a lot of introspection as to what was I about and, and the natural investor is what I concluded to as a brand to be able to shine light on to the soul within money which is Bitcoin, essentially. I think it's like the the soul incarnate in terms of money, uh, how it can connect all souls across the globe. And trying to be able to pick that, unravel, unravel that, and trying to build upon that, just like philosophers were able to build upon the nature of reality in the past. I believe we, could, we can progress on unraveling reality through the use of Bitcoin and by understanding the flows of life using Bitcoin as our base tool, you know, because it, it's how we value everything, right? So once we connect physical energy with um, with our value systems, so physical energy is the amount of work that we put in and, and then we can connect that with how we value things, which is what Bitcoin does, then we can really, we can bring our own perception of what the world is into kind of tangible tangible and quantifiable um way uh, and and i think that is going to connect people from all sorts of religions races ages for us to be aligned on the same relatively same mission of 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 peace you know internal peace i, I love that connection also a little bit it, it, so you you were saying that Bitcoin, this uh, electronical thing is kind of connecting in a way to nature because of the sound money principles that you see the natural investor uh, principles. Yeah, I mean, uh, the concept of money has been conflated with evil across time. Like, you know, the m money changers and Jesus coming in and pushing the tables up. And, you know, even in the the Hindu texts and the Jewish texts and all of these spiritual texts, they talk about money and how the love of money can lead to a, a bad, bad way. But I think money has always been able to be corrupted. And I do think the love of money is is not a good thing, but I think uh, being able to accumulate money and being able to use your money adequately, being able to allocate it to certain capitals, leads to a more fulfilling life. I think wealth is a very, very, very important pillar in everyone's life. And if you don't have, you, you cannot give with an empty bucket, right? You cannot give to others. So I think being able to know how to accumulate correctly how to invest your money into capital goods, which allow you to be able to give to others, is, well, including yourself, obviously, is a really, really important, important thing that people don't talk about. And especially in, in a communist world, right? And they, they strip you from property rights. They strip you from capital. And they concentrate all of that capital and all of that property into a centralized area, which means that people cannot give. They they cannot give because they've been stripped of what they've been able to give. 
So private capital accumulation, which is what Bitcoin really allows us to do, uh, I think leads to much more flourishing, much more individual purpose and a huge amount more of creativity, which we're, we're getting to see here in El Salvador at the moment. So that's the, yeah, that's the general principle of the natural investor is, is, is understanding money, capital and investment. It's so fascinating for me because I love that perspective. Then I see, because like, just like in two days, like not even two days, like one day, a little bit more than that, we have Austrian elections here in Austria. And I saw some of the debates just, just because I was curious. And there's like this, the libertarian parties, there's the left-wing parties, the right-wing parties and all those different kind of parties, especially from like half the aisle there's this thinking of like oh wealth accumulation is something evil especially if you do too much of that and we have to take from them because they have too much and it's that's a bad thing and we have to tax them it's not fair like all those things and that seems to be extremely popular especially a, a, a young along the the young crowd i feel like there's like a yeah it's it's unfair that i don't have anything and then there's like those those big rich guys that have everything. Why, why, why do you think, is that a natural thing to, to have? And, and it seems like to, to change a little bit with reality coming in and then like, oh yeah, it actually makes sense. Like if you ha don't have an incentive to work, then nobody will do anything. So there, there has to be some incentive for the free market to, to actually prosper. So like that's, that's for me so fascinating yeah, to see. Yeah. The way I look at it is that maybe the young people believe that there is something unfair, which is true. There is something very unfair about what's happening in the world, but it's not the fact that some people have a lot and you don't have much. It's the rules of the game by which we're all playing by, right? It's the it's the way by which the, that accumulation of capital happens, which is unfair. That the rules are malleable and they they move uh, depending on the emotions of the politicians or who has has control of the monetary units at the time so i believe that the the unfairness is uh, is a justified emotion that the young people have and they're trying to understand it and then, then the politicians i don't even think the politicians understand it themselves and like we always try and find a reason for things no matter what no matter how ignorant we are about what really is happening we always try and explain it with some sort of conclusion so If it fits your current understanding of the world and you think this is going to get you out of the unfairness, you're going to go for it and you're going to feel passionate for it because you know there's there's definitely something deeply wrong with what's happening in the world. But uh, it, it, it's much more nuanced and you need to understand what, what, what does capital mean and yeah, even like what leads to productivity, what leads to the pros prosperings of nations. And I mean, I think the the... The principle of private property itself is not talked about enough. Uh, and when, when I started reading about John Locke and, and his thesis on private property from the 1600s, it blew my mind. It blew my mind as to, as to how this was basically the underpinnings of the advancement of civilization and the industrial revolution and capitalism. And the, the fact that capitalism is seen as evil as well, I, I just don't think that's helpful. I don't think it's helpful for the world. So I think it's justified not feeling good about what's happening. But I think we just need to shine more light on real economics. Real economics, because you can say Bitcoin, but if you don't understand how stream economics works, it's really hard to fully grasp Bitcoin, right? find it hard to see how you could. Absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting also. Private property is interesting for me because since I get Bitcoin, I'm like, is there even a private property without Bitcoin? Like, do you really own anything except Bitcoin? It's like, before I was like, yeah, private property, you own your house, like you have the keys to your house. Like, no, but it's like police outside of the door and they're like, hey, sorry, that, that house is no longer yours. It's not yours. Bitcoin is kind of the, Bitcoin is kind of the invention of private property as I've uh -huh. seen it. Wow. Yeah, it's like private property incarnate, pretty much exactly what you're saying. And I had a conversation with another best friend of mine from years. We studied uh, mathematics together in university and he now lives in El Salvador. We're best friends. We've traveled across the globe together. But we were talking about something that's really a sensitive issue right now, which is 
uh, land and if you've if you've been if you've been pushed out of your land or if your land has been robbed from you after how many generations do, do you have a say on that piece of land you know obviously with Israel and Palestine it's a huge thing but it's across the globe it's generations of this is mine and and who who says who what what is whose right who is the governor of that and ultimately the like you're saying bitcoin is the only truly objective arbiter of private property because if you're able to defend your land even if you've robbed it that's what's happening at the moment, you know, in different places. Israel has that land because it's well able to defend that land, you know, and Palestine, it doesn't have reign over that land because it's not, it doesn't have the, the arms or the weapons, you know, it, it can't project the force. And the whole world might be in disagreement with it, but, or with one thing or the other, but at the end of the day, you know, come take this land, right? I've got the weapons. It's... So you you you'd like to say, oh, we all agree on these nations being these nations, but push comes to shove. If you can push, if push someone out of there, then you can't push someone out of their Bitcoin. Absolutely, it's it's uh, it, it's it's amazing because even like people tell me that someone could still put a gun to your head, but you still have the, the option to die with your Bitcoin. And that gives you all the leverage because if you, if someone wants to steal your Bitcoin, if they kill you, your Bitcoin are gone. They, they, they are gone with you. Granted, you're then still not there. Like it's not a good outcome for you, but it's the best outcome in that situation for you with Bitcoin. With everything else, if you have a bar of gold in your head, it's like, it's just take it away from you. That's, that's like such a simple thing and uh, especially if you do a daily bitcoin podcast it's sometimes um because you hear those things so many times it's so clear for you that that you feel stupid for even saying them but then when you go out in the in the normal world where they never really heard about bitcoin then you're like these things are blowing their minds they're like what <laughs> and like is that actually possible and so it's, it's it's i think we we have to always get rooted in the in the basics but one thing that i right yeah definitely Absolutely. One thing that I also want to do, um, get into with you, what, what do you think when we have now these private properties, when we have now this pristine pristine asset with, with Bitcoin, what impact do you think this will have on wars, on borders, on nation states, and all those things, especially as you are traveled a lot, you're now in El Salvador, you see a lot. And what do you think the impact on those things will have with Bitcoin? Well, this is a huge question and... There's a lot of theories that are floating around. You have the sovereign, sovereign, independent individual thesis that nation states basically dissolve, borders dissolve because they're defended by its own, you know, currency, essentially. So all defense mechanisms are paid by usually the government, like the national government. That that was the initial reasoning for government is to be able to hold private property for the citizens within so that it's not taken from them from from other countries or from people within that country i think that we are going to have a lot of private capital much more private capital that's built up people are going to be brought together on more fundamental principles i think that religions are going to still be a, a thing and people are going to come together based on their shared values and those who are together on their shared values I think there's going to be a lot of uh, defense systems that are fueled by Bitcoin deposits so you have the option to be based on who you identify with who who do you, which values you identify with you allocate a certain amount of your Bitcoin flow or your Bitcoin savings into certain defense systems that protect uh, to protect uh, your your group, your cohort of individuals from from private property. I also think the returns on your violence is going to drop massively. So I believe the cost of defense is going to drop drastically as well. Here in El Salvador is a brilliant example where 
you know, you had a guard for every single shop that existed pretty much across San Salvador and in other cities and towns across the country. Each guard has to be paid a, a wage. That guard has a shotgun that that, co- that has a cost itself. Then you have the individuals who are in the shop who are worried about getting, you know, you know, getting caught. So they can only move from the shop to their house. They can't move in other areas to sell their product or service. They, their market reduces drastically. People are only contained within their towns and they can't move and sell to other clients. You've got barbed wire at the top of your at the top of your walls. You had shops that couldn't display their their name. They remained hidden so that the gangs would not know that that existed, so that they wouldn't extort that area. So you had a, a huge amount of investment on just defending property. Now in El Salvador, there's no worries at all. So when you're building buildings, there's no extra barbed wire. No shops are hiring guards to be able to protect themselves. People are selling their product across the nation. So they have not one, two, three, four times the amount of clients. They have about 50 or 100x to the market and they can just distribute their their uh, product around. So the, the cost of defense is going to drop down a lot. I think the state... Depending on how united your people are as a nation, you know, I feel like islands might be more united or pe- things that are geographically isolated or, um, you know, nations that have had a long, long history might take much more longer to dissolve and they'll have their own systems in place and their own ways of governing and you'll have different layers of governing systems uh, based on how many people. So like in Switzerland, you have the different cantons, right? And you've got the tax system. This is, I'm coming from very superficial. I'm very ignorant on this topic. But from what I understand, the tax taxes are higher for the local, for the locality, so for the town. And then the municipality then increases it or decreases. And then the federal taxes are quite low. So I believe that we will end up kind of taking on that sort of tax system on different layers where you pay the most for just your local town because that's that's how you know the people around you know exactly what you need the most. You know, you can vote for your bridge to be built around you and that's where your money is going towards. But you do, you know, economies of scale is definitely a valuable thing. So I think it would be efficient to allocate some of your income or some of your savings to a, a larger cohort of individuals. So that would be more like large scale defense, maybe air defense uh, systems, you know, that take a huge amount of capital, initial capital. Energy plants, you know, energy plants take a lot of initial capital, nuclear plants that, you know, you, you're not going to chip in a, a, for a town of 2000 people into a nuclear plant but you're better off doing it with like millions of people, right? Uh, so I believe that the, the tiers of taxation, it'll be much more uh, optional, you know, uh, but you can't partake in the services that you don't, your money towards. And I, I believe that's going to be kind of, I mean, that's not super clear, but I do think that, um, you know, people just increasing your tax taxes like that isn't going to be possible. They're going to have to ask for permission. Listen, you have the option to increase your tax rate. These are the benefits of you increasing your tax rate. And if the politicians don't follow through with those outcomes, they're out. Even a smart contract, you know what I mean? That could enable that. But we're just riffing here. It's uh, it, it, it's it's so cool. I, I love it a lot. It's also interesting because you are in El Salvador and there is like ground zero of Bitcoin nation state adoption, as, as I call it. It's like uh, not 100% there, but we already see the first, uh, let's see the first cycle of Bitcoin adoption in an actual nation that that has, uh, what is it, six to seven million people or something like that, uh, which is an, an, uh, a good size, like a good founding ground where we can see what's happening. From your perspective, what do you think is out of influences of like 
when you have a Bitcoin circle economies, when you have this slow process of starting, you mentioned already the, the cost of defense. Is there something else that you witnessed of like people maybe taking different financial decisions and influencing that on a family or individual level? What else can you show us from El Salvador, what already happened in maybe also in Berlin uh, with, with some investments you, you've seen? I was just talking to someone a few minutes ago and he was staying in a really cheap Airbnb in San Salvador, the capital city, but it was a lovely area. And your man basically built a huge reservoir of around five times, I think five times 12, like something like, uh, like, thousands of gallons essentially like tens and tens of thousands of gallons underneath the, the building and he's collecting rainwater and he's using that rainwater that's underneath his his house to fuel the showers and the toilets and the taps and stuff like that and he's got a good pumping system uh, the cost of water in san salvador is much higher than around here so it could be a monthly fee of three dollars for water around here in berlin but in the city, it could be $50. And what he did there was he did a big investment on being able to put a fish, a large quantity of water to reduce his water bills massively. I think this is the epitome of the types of decisions that are starting to be taken here, where people are thinking much more in the future, being able to reduce their ongoing costs by being able to implement infrastructure in their own locality that will allow them to be more productive high, high, have higher savings rates I'm living in Berlin at the moment Berlin is a town on a volcano in the middle of El Salvador and there's a 150 megawatt energy plant with mining here and there's over 130 vendors who are accepting Bitcoin we just had a class about 30 minutes ago in here about 50 students came from the high school to come and write all, they're all writing down their 12 words, how to lock in their seed phrase, how to recover it. So Bitcoin is more impregnated into the consciousness of the humans around here. That's that's just a fact. Uh, the idea of, of inflation and that the currency is debasing is common knowledge among the students now across the whole nation. It's like, no, oh, like, you know, why would you do that? Should it's losing purchasing power? It's like, it's like a, a given thing. So that the seed has been has been made for all of the students. You've got family men with kids who are previously just had maybe a printing shop and maybe catered for the local town. Now thinking of expanding in four different locations and having that ability to foresee the next few years and expect there to be an increase in business and increase of tourism you've got a lot of people who i mean el salvador already had a high birth rate but mothers are much more willing to have kids around here compared to western countries you know i talked to other people across ireland and spain and a lot of women don't want to have babies. And a lot of men don't either, right? They, the, the pessimism that is there is, is very tangible. And the feasibility of being able to have kids obviously is just not there when you're, when you're working off of a highly debasing currency. So you're seeing a lot more children, a lot of baby showers. You're seeing optimism in the kids coming out of school. You're seeing people uh, extending their timeline in terms of the decisions that they're making. So are your actions orientated towards a project that is a, a couple of months or is it a 10, 15, 30, 40 year project that, you're, that your actions are geared towards? So you've got a lot of long time preference. You've got a ton of Bitcoiners coming here and living here permanently. So all of this permeates, that culture does permeate through into society as well. Obviously, I'm in a bubble here, you know, I've a lot of most of the people I interact with are Bitcoiners or local Salvadoreños.
but uh, it's super tangible. The development in the country is pretty decentralized. It's not all concentrated in San Salvador. You can go to local towns around Berlin and you'll see bustling infrastructure being built, new houses being constructed, paint jobs. You see people increasing the quality of their clothing. So yeah, that just a lot of more higher level thinking, people increasing their quality of life and yeah, changing their own perspective of who they are. I think that's the beauty of it all. Like ultimately the decisions you make in life, I find are based on who you think you are, right? If you think you are a waster, you're just going to go and do things that wasters do. If you think you're supposed to change the world and make a huge difference, and this is your responsibility, your actions are going to be t- geared towards that. So people's perception of who they are is improving and the the capabilities that the capacity of them to increase the quality of life is becoming much more apparent. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit Bitbox dot swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self-custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the Bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step. And if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much that's beautiful i love uh, i love that a lot already i'm also with berlin and Bitcoin Beach and, and San Salvador, all those places, you can probably already see this circle economy flowing a little bit more. Like I have it now, even in Austria, a little, 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 little bit where most of my sponsors pay me in Bitcoin. And I have some bars and restaurants where I actually can pay with Bitcoin in middle of Europe, in, in Austria, which is amazing that this is uh, already reality. It's not like, I can pay everything, but I can pay like 1% of my expenses uh, with Bitcoin, which is far away from the goal. But then I imagine if this is already a little bit possible in Austria, how amazing it would be already in uh, El Salvador, where there are also no taxes on, on Bitcoin transactions, which is a huge thing in Austria. I'm lucky to have bought Bitcoin in an area where those Bitcoins are not tax uh tax implication yeah so it's attached to your identity the bitcoin oh, yeah hey yeah yeah um mo- most of it uh it's it's like um uh, when i first bought bitcoin it's like the okay let's first break it down the, the tax thing uh austria made it uh a tax law that from february i think 2021 it was 
uh, all Bitcoin has to be like taxed with uh, 27% uh, on the profits. Before that, if you have Bitcoin before that, you don't have to pay taxes for that. Uh, and it's possible to get non-KYC Bitcoin, but KYC Bitcoin is the way more convenient and easier and faster way. That's a little bit of the problem because I think probably 95 or 99% of the people here in Austria, they get the KYC uh, Bitcoin because it's just so convenient. It's just so much easier. It's literally, to make an example, uh, if I go from my bank account to my multi-signature hardware uh, setup, uh, multi uh, um, self-custody setup, it takes me five to 10 minutes from the bank account to the exchange to the hard, like that's that's really, really quickly uh, from like an onboarding process. Uh, do, you use, do you use 21? Yeah, I use 21, uh, 21 Bitcoin. It's Austrian. It's Austrian uh, company, Austrian bank account. They're, they're working really good together. And it's the, the quickest way probably in us to do, be onboarded on, on Bitcoin. Uh, but there are non-KYC uh, options. There's even like local Bitcoin meetups where you can do that really peer-to-peer -peer where you can get cash there and get Bitcoin there. Like those things happen. How, how is that in, in El Salvador actually? Probably there's no KYC exchanges or uh, <laughs> never asked that question actually. Yeah. Uh, well, you've got a lot of people coming with cash. So uh, Berlin actually is flush with Bitcoin. So you've got loads of stores that have so the local supermarket has thousands of dollars in Bitcoin and they're looking for cash to pay for some of their expenses. So you've got people coming from the States, Australia, France, who are looking to buy non-KYC Bitcoin. They can access cash pretty easily here. They can take it out pretty much fee free and then they can buy with their cash all of this non-KYC Bitcoin and they're just stacking hard. So you have a beautiful... Uh, meeting of Bitcoiners who are gagging for non-KYC Bitcoin who are looking for it and then local stores who are more than happy to have a fluid transaction with no fees just sending lightning and getting getting cash so that they can pay their providers for so there's a there's it's a liquidity pool here in Berlin in terms of cash to, to, to Bitcoin and the aim is to bolster this out and to to make it you know much 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 higher level the aim always with each of the vendors that we come across is to uh, not use any of the Bitcoin ATMs because the Bitcoin goes outside of the town, but to be able to use uh, the options that they have within so that we have Bitcoin circulating within the town. The more Bitcoin that we have circulating the town, the average net wealth of individuals increases as Bitcoin comes up. So that means, you know, Berlin's net wealth is quite well proportion like um correlated towards the increase in bitcoin's price as an economy you know like if it's circuit if if it's moving from individual to individual and store between store and bitcoin's purchasing power increases exponentially and bitcoin isn't leaving that town then this town kind of increases with that right and each individual can then make their own decisions on how to use that bitcoin for 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 their own business uh, the 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 meetups are really good. You've got some real characters coming through here. People who've lived all sorts of lives and have gotten into Bitcoin through different reasons. And uh, they, can, they can give to the town in different ways. You know, you've got permaculture experts, people who've set up multiple businesses, businesses in Hong Kong for years, businesses in the States where they've set up wedding states. And they've just come to live in this small Salvadorino town to live on a Bitcoin standard and build their own business. It's 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 really beautiful. Really, really cool. I, I, I love to see that. How, how in general, how important do you see in general that we have those big Bitcoin circular economies that a flourishing of Bitcoin, not for that town specifically, but for Bitcoin adoption in general? People talk about this and want to get this message across to people. The dollar symbol, the euro symbol, the yen symbol, all of these symbols, and it's important because we're, we're run by symbols. You know, the cross, we're run by Hindu. These are symbols that have come across from millennia. 
symbols are extremely important. We're run by symbols, right? Carl Jung has talked about this. You know, kids see this before they even see it. They see it in their dreams before they see it in reality. It's, it's in the collective unconscious, okay? Symbols run humanity. The dollar, the yen, all of the euro, all of these symbols symbolize corruption, symbolize pollution, symbolize lies and you know, I'm not, you know, it's all, that's not all doom and gloom, but Bitcoin symbolizes purity, hope, light, brilliance, right? And even if you're storing Bitcoin, but you're using dollars and yens and you're using euros to be able to exchange for goods that you eat and that you live in and that you use for your car to run, you're you're, when I, when if you're if you're selling me a fresh apple that you've harvested from your farm that you've taken really good care of, and I'm giving you a dollar that I know is corrupted, devaluing quickly, infinitely reproducible, I'm giving you shit for something that you've put so much care and time into in exchange. That is not a fair exchange. That is not a fair. The 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 it's not equal and. If we keep doing this, if we keep using dollars and all, all of these currency units that represent corruption for goods and services, if you, if you ex extrapolate that to infinity, uh, as you do in mathematics, you know, as the limit goes towards infinity, all of the goods and services that you get in return are going to turn to shit. They're going to be corrupted. They're going to be bad. They're going to be bad for us. The food that we're going to eat is going to turn bad. So it's really important that the exchange of goods and services is done with Bitcoin and is done with this purity because what this this reiterates to you every time you receive Bitcoin for a good or service that you give is that you're receiving something that's ultimately scarce it's ultimately pure it's ultimately brilliant and you're going to you're going to be incentivized to produce that you're going to be incentivized to produce the highest quality product Products that will last a long time, like the Toyotas built in the 90s. You're going to be uh, focused on creating extremely high quality watches and chocolates, just like the, the Swiss and the engines, just like the Germans. You know, you're going to be, you know, you're, you're going to be focused on delivering quality. And if we don't have these circular economies, if we don't have these areas where people refuse to use the symbols that represent corruption, and we won't advance as society. We're not going to be able to build on on top of something brilliant. We're not going to be able to stop the wars and the the deceit and the corruption that exists behind all of the the smoky mirrors. And um, so, it, I think I think ultimately it starts in circular economies i think the bitcoin revolution the worldwide bitcoin revolution starts in all of these bitcoin circular economies so if, if you're in a situation where you have the option but you want to make a bit more money uh, a bit more fiat because you need to make more bitcoin and this is your chance you need to take a risk you need to take a wage cut you need to be able to you know this is more than just you this is the world right this is the world that we're talking about and the decisions that we make now impact the children that we leave the world to you know, once we die. And the sooner we move over to the circular economies, the sooner we move over to Bitcoin, the more options that our children have, the more peace that they'll find, the better quality families that they'll form, the more honest and trustful the relationships are between individuals in these different areas, which is ultimately what we want. We want we want to be spoken truthfully and honestly and we want to eat really high quality things and hear beautiful music and look at incredible art and have a strong connection to God. We all strive for these things. This is this is our opportunity. It seems like Bitcoin is the moral form of money. It's the it's the ethics. It's the money that besides the monetary aspects, it's the ethnic and moral thing to do to use bitcoin it's it's it's, it's it seems to like be like even beyond monetary incentives be a really good choice for you yeah yeah right and say uh, it's a uh, it's an honor to be able to be a part of this at such an early stage and to be able to have conversations with 
individuals like yourself, Robin. Absolutely, really, really cool. Um, coming to a conversation that we have, I think we should also touch on the Adopting Bitcoin conference that, that is coming up in November, I think 17th November, 16th November, some, somewhere around that. It's the 15th and 16th of November. Almost, I almost got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There'll be plenty of stuff going on on the, on the 16th and 17th and 18th as well in El Salvador. A lot of side events. A lot of I will... I will be there from 11th to 18th, I think. I think that that week I will be there, 11th to 18th of November. So I, I'm looking forward to like going to as much El Salvadorian experiences as possible. But yeah, like uh, you are also organizer, also like I was coming the the conference along, and and what can we expect? The conference has been a real experience organizing this. It's a really strong team that we have organizing it led by Kamal, who's ran it for the last three years. This is the, going to be the fourth year of adopting Bitcoin. We're expecting over a thousand attendees coming from all over the world. And also a, a really strong cohort of El Salvadoreños who want to learn more about Bitcoin and, and network with other individuals coming from across the globe. It's, it's The conference is on the 15th and 16th. And uh, there are side events beforehand. Me Premier Bitcoin, I'll have a... They have a graduation, which is amazing. It's an amazing experience, Robin. So you should definitely check that out where you have Bitcoiners who go and test the students to see the, their Bitcoin knowledge. And if they pass, then they graduate and the kids go up and get their diploma. And it's a very well-organized, official and very heartwarming event. And it's a, you know it's something I'd never seen before. That is on the 13th. On the 14th, you have the Bitcoin Unconference by Me Premier Bitcoin, and then you have the Film Festival. The Film Festival is part of Adopting Bitcoin. We're going to be screening Dirty Coin. Dirty Coin is a movie that is about Bitcoin mining and it is mainly geared towards policy decision makers and people who are curious as to how mining can, you know, help the ecosystem, how it can bolster energy grids and how you know it's not a dirty coin essentially I, I highly recommend people to check that out that's going to be in the anthropological museum in san salvador so as you can see dirty coin movie screening thanks for getting these up well, that's going to be cool we're going to have a speaker's dinner just after the dirty coin movie screening as you can see there that's going to be for you robin so you'll be able to break some ice with all of the speakers there beforehand. So then obviously on the 15th and 16th, we're going to have the conference and uh, we'll go through the side events first and then we'll go into the conference itself. You have the after party, which will be on the 16th of November. That's set to be fantastic. It's it's going to be sponsored by Plan B and uh, a lot of people are going to be able to uh, get to go to that. I, we're expecting maybe more than 400 people to go to the after party. The next day, then we have Bitcoin Beach. People can go down from the city down to the Bitcoin Beach. Or if you stay down by the beach, you have the opportunity to stay there. They always put on an amazing show down in Bitcoin Beach. You have, it's, Zante is beautiful. It's a, it's a surf town. The sun sets, you can use sats everywhere. You've got um, a strong team at Bitcoin Beach. And You'll have different events on there as well. So you'll have a party at Bitcoin Mansion uh, there by Zante, which is, you know, it's an unbelievable venue. And yeah, that's that's going to be another side event. You've got different tours happening. So you've got the Freedom Riders Tour. So if you're into, into motorcycle tours, you can join a gang of motorcycles where they go across El Salvador to different uh, Bitcoin venues and different areas, tourist areas around the, the country. Alan, who's leading it, is a top, top Bitcoiner. He's uh, he's come around to Berlin quite a lot. He's actually one of the first to come here and check the place out. Highly recommend if you're into bikes to check that out. You've got the Bitcoin Roatan Retreat. So Roatan is in Honduras. Prospera is a private city in Honduras. And you've got a Bitcoin center there. Bitcoin is used as a unit of account. 
that you have an opportunity to check that place out in a fully inclusive package. So do check out that website if you're interested in going over there. Highly recommend. And then if you're around for the week after, surely you can get to Berlin before this, but on the 23rd, you're going to have a full day festival, which is being planned out right now. You've got, you know, the whole tourism department who are behind this as well. You've got the Bitcoin Berlin team who are organizing this and it's basically closing down all the streets. You're going to have traditional music, coffee competitions. You're going to have football tournaments. You're going to have people come from different cities and everything is going to be paid in Bitcoin as well. So that's going to be a really good opportunity to check out Berlin. There's over 130 merchants who accept Bitcoin. You've got a strong cohort of uh, expats who live here or Bitcoiners. So check it out. You'll probably not want to leave Berlin. Maybe you want to just stay and live here. Uh, very possible, especially if you earn money uh, digitally, uh, Rob. <laughs> it's, 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 very, uh, it's very tempting for me. <laughs> I think that the major thing that keeps me in, in, in Austria is my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> bring her, bring her over. May, maybe she can also come, yeah. And then obviously you've got the Bitcoin Pleb Tour ran by Mike, and he is an experienced uh, tour giver. He'll show you all the way around the country, all to the best spots. So these are the side events. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, once you get over here, you'll figure out loads of other things that are happening. There's going to be over a thousand Bitcoiners here. So that's a big opportunity. If you go back into the main home home area, and we can kind of scroll down just to give people an idea of uh, of the speakers so for it's it's the high signal con bitcoin conference for builders is anybody who's building on top of big tickets are going up in price by the end of the month these are the types of speakers that are coming you know stacy max peter saint Ange, who's an austrian economist here at uh, riot platforms herman who's the head of bitcoin ekasi tone vase who's a um unconfiscatable poker player trader Giacomo Zucco, head of Plan B, OG, Will Reeves, founder of Fold App. You've got Maya, who's basically trying to go for presidency in Suriname, Suriname, trying to bring it into uh, legal tender status. You've got your equity guys, people in the traditional finance space who are going to have panels and discuss how Bitcoin has an impact. If we scroll down further, you've got, you know, the the OGs of here in El Salvador, John Dennehy, founder of Me Premier Bitcoin, biggest education initiative in the world for students. Mike Peterson, founder of Bitcoin Beach. Nicholas Bertie, founder of Blink app, which is used worldwide. It's our main app that we use here in Berlin. Nicholas is a, is a legend. Roman, leader of Bitcoin Beach. Luke, everyone knows Luke Broyles. Brilliant, uh, brilliant talk, brilliant host. He'll be ho hosting a good few panels and talks. And the list just goes on. We've got top educators like Pusis G, Dusan, who's, who's the head of uh, education down by Roatan. You can keep going. It just, the list goes on. Svetsky, David Bailey, and it just keeps going. So um, the conference is going to be split into different areas. You've got, uh, you've got two main stages. We've got the main stage and then you've got the open source stage. So main stage fits around 350 to 400 people. You've got the other area which has 300, uh, 300 people who can visit it. You're going to have an art exhibition with over 50 pieces of Bitcoin art with over 50 artists who are bringing their art into this conference. And that's like in a main real estate area. So you have to go through the art exhibition to go to the main stage. You've got this New privileged access ticket that is available, which is at a very reasonable rate for what you're getting, because you're getting a, a high quality buffet over the course of the two days, uh, all paid for. You've got different cocktails that you can avail of or drinks or whatnot. You have a concierge service up in the privileged access area. You're going to be able to see over the main stage. You're going to have lounge areas to have your private conversations. You can Talk to all of these builders, all of these founders, all of these uh, investors who are speaking, but also who are partaking in the privileged access area. And you also get access to the film festival the day before. So you can check that out. They're at 12.50 now, the tickets for privileged access. So if you want a bit of a more bespoke experience, get everything paid for and be able to 
you know, get to know all of the speakers as well. Highly recommend you you purchase that. And if you have a general access ticket, you can upgrade it. You just reach out to the team or to myself when you can do that. You've got the main exhibition hall as well, which has, is full of Bitcoin businesses. We're basically sold out pretty much uh, of the exhibition hall. You're going to have a gym that we're kind of getting to sort out if you want to do a few reps while you're at the conference. <laughs> you can, wow. That, yeah. that, that I never saw. Like I was uh, before Bitcoin even at conferences for IT security and now I was already at, at some Bitcoin conferences there. But a gym, that that's amazing. Yeah, it's just if you need it, if you need a, a pump. And uh, then you've got, you know, table tennis tables. You've got Bitcoin para niños, which I've already mentioned, where you can just uh, send your kids to Bitcoin para niños. And there's a lot of people who are putting a lot of effort in making this a really nice area, the Bitcoin para niños. It's, it's going to be a full schedule from the start to the end. So at any point in time, you want to you wanna have a bit of alone time with uh, with your partner or just yourself. Uh, and and listen to a really important talk. Just bring your child, and they'll be taken care of really, really well. From people who have set up Bitcoin para niños in Madeira and in other other Bitcoin conferences beforehand. You've got the food truck area, so we're going to have different food trucks that are dishing out high quality products, uh, high quality food throughout the conference. Different types of tastes. Bitcoin Prague have something similar. You know the food trucks you had there is really really good quality food so we're going to go with a similar sort of ethos and then if anybody is aware we've got the bitcoin farmers market that is on three times a month essentially it's going to be held in berlin on this sunday and the bitcoin farmers market is basically a farmers market where everyone accepts bitcoin and it's been going on for well over a year now and it's turned into a really really big thing i mean it's like one of the main meetups and hundreds of people come every every Sunday that it's on. And we're going to bring all of the stalls to adopt in Bitcoin. And all of these amazing products will be sold for sats. So yeah, that's kind of an overview. I haven't included everything, but the conference is set to be something unique, something we haven't had before. And it's in Bitcoin country as well. And the two days there is just a taster of how Bitcoin can be used as money, right? That's amazing. I love it a lot. That, that this was an amazing overview. Didn't knew about those amazing side or satellite satellite events, uh, how they call it on the website. Uh, they are really good. Usually, I, I'm not that big of a fan of the side events. They're like, ah, okay, they're okay. But they, they seem to be really fun. They're really cool. By the way, also for everyone that is now watching and listening, if you haven't have a big ticket, there's like a discount with code Robin. As always, with all my sponsors, with all all my affiliates with all my partners, code Robin, just type it in, try if you can find a discount there. I should be available and should be already online. I'm looking forward to seeing as many people as possible there. I saw the guest list and like the speaker list and I was like, oh, there's like in every row at least like two, three people that I already interviewed or know <laughs> or know in some sense. So like you, you will see a lot of uh, if you're used to that podcast, you will see in, in El Salvador a lot of yes. familiar faces there uh, just from the speakers. And then there's like a thousand people coming uh, <laughs> additionally to that. And you will see a lot of people that have a lot of similarities with you. And the one thing that I'm like, I have two really big passions in Bitcoin. The first is like self-custody. <laughs> and, and then the second is like meet other Bitcoiners. I, I love when we can go to a local Bitcoin meetup. That's the easiest thing everyone can do. Everyone can go just to a restaurant and invest like 10 euros to find another Bitcoiner. Or you don't even have to order something. You just like meet other Bitcoiners. Uh, and then it's like, of course, the Bitcoin conferences that you can go to. There's Orange Bill app. There's so many different avenues you can go through. But make sure to meet other Bitcoiners. It's a game changer in your Bitcoin knowledge, in, in your networking. It's a game changer in your energy that you get from those Bitcoiners. It completely changed my life. Like the first Bitcoin conference in Prague was kind of the starting point for me to really take my online presence and my let's make advertisement for Bitcoin. That's what I'm all about, making orange billing content for the world. Um, really, that, that was the starting point for me. And it it gives you an energy and it gives you fire that, that you will not get anywhere else no matter what conference you go through maybe 
for some people, El Salvador is a very far trip and it's a, a lot of costs involved. I get that. If you can afford it, it's definitely worth it. But if you go to Amsterdam or if you go to Prague, if you go to any conference, I love that. Like, if you haven't been to any conference, go to at least one. At the second one, I don't have to sell you that because it will be such an amazing experience that you will be addicted to Bitcoin conferences. At least that's my experience so far. No. And I'm really uh, looking forward to, to meeting you finally in person. Uh, now yes. we are on the second podcast uh, together. And I'm already also looking forward to, to being uh, part of the speaker. I'm really honored that, that you uh, brought me up as a, as a speaker also in the conference. It will be really fun also. Uh, yeah, it will be. I'm just like you. You can see how it's flowing with me. And I'm, 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 I'm loving when I can connect people and when I can be with, with Bitcoiners. And this, that's this, kind of my thing, yeah. This is the this is the opportunity, uh, Robin. I, I couldn't agree with you more. It, it opens doors that you never thought would have be available. The, the idea of Bitcoin is usually in your own head and online. And there's no replacement for meeting people in the flesh and being able to exchange. Um, you know... This is the way. This is the way forward. Uh, getting together in person, exchanging ideas, exchanging knowledge, uh, hugs, and you know, experiences together as Bitcoiners. I think that is that is the best thing, best thing possible. I didn't include that we also have two workshops as well. So we'll have, you know, two workshop rooms with show and self custody, multi sig, different tools that you can use, hands on approach in in terms of Bitcoin. We have uh, two hour classes in the morning for Spanish speakers just as an intro to Bitcoin just so that they get familiar with Bitcoin and yeah, uh, but we've got like people who are extremely knowledgeable on the code as well who will be able to show you how to run a node and to be able to you know back back your back your Bitcoin up in the safest and most long-term way possible right so yeah, it's, it's it's it'll be an experience. I'm really excited personally. This has been a really good experience. I can't wait to see you, Robin. I can't wait to see you in person. Take your hand. Will be fun. Will be fun. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Um, it's been a pleasure. It's already one hour. So we have an end routine in the podcast where we have two questions. The first question is always the same for every guest, and the second one is from the previous guest. Let's start off with the first question. Is always the same question for every guest. What can we learn from you besides Bitcoin and all the things that we already talked about? What haven't we talked about? Touched on a lot, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think able to, I suppose mu music, essentially, yeah. I think, yeah, music. I've, you know, I've gone through a period of mixing and putting on, on, on music. Uh, I, you know, I think anybody who's into music and wants to come to El Salvador and bring their talents here it's it's all open we're building a a hostel down by the beach big hostel a group of irish friends uh i've one of my best friends already living here and we're going to be building a, a dance floor irish bar sports gym a bjj gym and stuff like that so if anybody has specialized in brazilian jiu-jitsu or djing or live music please reach out where we're looking for all the talent in the world to come and bring it to El Salvador, live here full time, all the opportunity to do that. So that's that's one aspect of of my life that we didn't talk. Really cool. Now I love that music. It's amazing. It's it's like uh, in that part of the show, people bring up either family or music or something completely unexpected and weird. <laughs> it's a, but that's, that's usually the most fun part. Yeah. I like that question a lot because sometimes it brings up completely something new. Uh, yeah, really cool. The other end routine, you, you're already familiar with that. Um, we had that also with when you were the first time there, where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And the question for you is, uh, from the previous guest, how do you think prices of goods and services will be different under a Bitcoin standard? Uh, they'll constantly be dropping. We will draw up uh, the imp Employees will have to, uh, uh, people who hire employees will have to ask employees to drop their wage rather than employees asking to increase their wage to, to the owners. Um, those things that are most reproducible will drop at a quicker rate. So the things that, you know, that you can use machinery to be able to reproduce much quicker are going to 
drop to close to zero much quicker. And, you know, there, there'll be a premium on, on scarce things. I suppose we can already see that was on land where price increases. But uh, the Bitcoin uh, value of the scarcest items will remain the most stable. And those things that are most reproducible will, will decrease the quickest. Uh, the most popular things will will end up bringing the most profits because they'll be the most sales. So most profits means higher amount of investment, meaning higher amount of production, and they'll they'll drop in price as well. So most popular things will end up being the cheapest things as well. And if we all live by a Bitcoin standard and value high quality products, that means the highest quality products are going to be the cheapest. It's great. Interesting. Uh, I love the perspective. Also, the the mind shift. I just realized that last week, actually, someone brought it up to me, and now you bring it up again. The mind shift of when you negotiate salary, now you as an employee have to go to the employer every year or every half year to like negotiate a higher price. Now this lever completely turns around, where the employer has to go to the employee and say like. Oh, we have to, uh, or we, we would like to have a lower salary for you because the the cost is coming down. That that is a power shift in in companies. That's that's a fascinating thing. I, that's one thing we talked about it before the show, before we recorded with the podcast. I've done a daily Bitcoin show, and that's a thing never thought about. And the first time I brought it up, like after 250 episodes of a Bitcoin podcast, after being four years in Bitcoin, it's the first time ever I thought about that. So it's uh, crazy uh, how much uh, and how deep and how wide the Bitcoin knowledge really goes and, and how much you can <laughs> dive deep into topics. I think I barely scratched the surface and I'm really looking forward to the next years uh, in diving even deeper with the podcast. Yeah. So. Thank you so much, uh, Charlie, for, for being on the show. Uh, Is there a question that I, I ask for the next one? No, that's not. Yes, you can. Usually I do it offline to give you time to think about a question. But if you already have one. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sign off. Let's sign off. <laughs> okay. Uh, but before I just sign off, I want to just give you the opportunity to uh, plug your things give the people if they have questions if they want to reach out to you where can they find you where is the best place to, to reach you uh, the x obviously is, is huge so the natural inve one maybe you can put it on the the show notes it's uh, the natural anve one for x uh i have noster as well so give us a follow if you can i don't know my end pub off off by heart um <laughs> But you have also Telegram. So if you want to reach out, it's just The Natural Investor. Check out thenaturalinvestor.info. That's my, my web page. The idea is to flesh that out over the next few decades. And if you want any consultancy with regards to, I suppose, structuring your, your, your Bitcoin uh, to allocate towards different capital goods, especially if you're interested in investing capital goods in El Salvador, then whether that's land or whether that's other types of businesses, you can reach out. I've got I've managed to attain a large connection here. Check out Adopt and Bitcoin the website. I highly recommend for anyone interested in just doing it, booking the flights and getting over here, checking it out. Highly recommend. And also coming up to Bitcoin Berlin, there's a lot of really good things, really good people here. So that's my plug. Really cool. Thank you so much. Uh, also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening uh, for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>